Okay, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a flange on our lid, right? So we're going to cut out a lid. We're going to make a flange for these. I want to show you something first. This one is my single bowl shape form that I demonstrated, and I'm not sure how I'm going to interpret it yet. I'm thinking of having the teapot in this fashion, and my lid's going to be here. This one is my two bowl uh, press molded form. And as you can see, it's kind of flattened in the center. So I want to show you a trick to reinflate your work. Sometimes you might not have joined the two pieces very well. And as you were working with it, using a rib to smooth, and again, this is what I've been doing. I've been taking a rib, I've been in just a little bit of water, and I'm coming along like this, and I'm working the surface. So I probably have at least 10 minutes of time smoothing this out, but in the process, it collapsed. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reinflate this, and I'm gonna show you a technique. So you wanna take a small piece of clay, and what I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make like it's essentially like a valve stem. It's in the shape of a golf tee, okay? You guys know what a golf tee looks like. So here I have this conical shaped piece, and I'm gonna trim it. I don't need this much on the end. So this is what we want it to look like, okay? Uh, maybe, you know, the longest first half of your finger. So this is what I'm gonna do. I need to reinflate this. And right here it caved in. You can see it's caved in. This side is nice and flat. So I'm gonna put the flat side on the bat. I'm gonna take my needle tool and I'm gonna take my needle tool and where there's an arc or a bend, this is where I'm gonna do And Watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the needle tool and I'm just gonna stick it in. And now I'm gonna keep twisting and I'm gonna go all the way through until we go this far into the clay. So can you see that big hole now? This is what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take this little valve stem and I'm gonna dip it in some water. Okay. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it right in there and I'm gonna keep pressing until I get a really good seal. Okay, now the next step is to take this needle tool and you want your, the clay to be larger in diameter than your needle tool. I'm going to go in and I'm going to pierce all the way through the end of that piece of clay. Okay, I'm twisting it. Now, I have a way that I can blow air into this form and you will see it rise. And when it rises and kind of puffs more than I actually want, I'm going to pinch this closed and we will have air trapped in this form. So here we go. Okay, just pay an eye. Look right here at the top of this form as I blow air into it. Look at that. I made it puff up. It's no longer collapsed. So now... What I'm gonna do, we've pinched that close, and I'm just gonna cut. Oh, air's getting out. Seal that up. Trapped air is a benefit for us. It helps hold its shape. Kind of like when we made our rattle, and we trapped the air. That's the reason why we did that project, so you can learn that lesson. And I got a little bit of repair to do here. <clears throat> but you can see it's no longer flat and caved in, right? It's level, it's even domed a little bit. So that's how you would fix that. Now, if you go to blow into this and you hear air coming out as you're blowing in, that means where you join two bowls together or your bowl to your bottom slab, you didn't compress it very well and air is escaping. So you'll need to stop and fix those spots where the leak is. 
and then continue again. So I'm going to put this one aside, but I want to show this <clears throat> this two bowl form. Lots of options. I can interpret this. I can have the teapot look just like this, and I could put legs on it, and I could put a handle on it. I could also interpret the teapot in a vertical fashion, where I could have legs and on it, and I can have a handle up on top or a handle on the side and the spout coming up. I could even turn it on an angle and have the teapot like this, and this could be where my lid is. So you need to look at your form and to figure out how you want to interpret that form to be your teapot. Now I'm going to use my Lazy Susan here. This is really makes it easy to rotate the work. And this is my single bowl shape. And as you can see, here's my slab. Now I have some options here. I could have I could have this where my lid is, and I could have my handle come from here and over there, or I could turn it this way. And I had talked about in the PowerPoint presentation about having a wide base and then just elevating it up ever so slightly to create some shadow. That's what I'm going to do for this one. So right here is going to be the top or where my lid is going to be. Now, you don't want to just freeform cut your lid, you want to have a plan. And I'm gonna use this plastic cup. This is approximately two and a half inches across for the base. And this would be a good size. Any smaller than about two and a half inches and your lid is too small. You make a very small opening, you won't be able to have a flange and as you use your teapot, or as I grade it, no flange, you're gonna be deducted points. So what I'm gonna do is just line this up and try to get it as best I can centered. And I'm just going to use my needle tool and I'm going to scribe a line all the way around. <clears throat> there. So you can see there's my mark for my lid. Now I want to show you something. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to make a line like this. And in doing that line, that little line is going to let me know which way this lid fits perfectly, okay? So the next step is I'm going to take my fettling knife. Whoop. I'm going to take my fettling knife. And you always want to, whenever you use your knife or your tools, you want to make sure the dry clay is clean. I'm going to take this fettling knife and I'm going to hold it at an angle and I'm going to cut Again, we hold the knife in one spot and we rotate the work. I'm going to rotate the work and I'm going to cut this at an angle um, to, make the, to remove the lid from the top. Think of it this way. If you carve a pumpkin with the knife straight up and down, when you get done cutting the top of the pumpkin, the lid falls through. We don't want that. We want to cut it at an angle all the way around and then after we're done cutting, the lid will, lid will not fall through. So I'm just going to start here. And again, I have air trapped. So we might hear a little bit of air come out. And I'm just going to come in here like this. And now I'm going to hold that at that 45 degree angle. And I'm just going to rotate the work towards my knife. And you don't need to put the knife that far. My clay is only a quarter of an inch. So I don't need to slide this all the way down where the blade is thick. I'm going to keep it where it's thin. And I'm going to maintain this angle. And I'm slowly going to rotate the work. And just try to focus and stay on your line. Okay. Again, that's why we put the line through the circle because this lid is only going to fit perfectly one exact way. And that line lets us know how to line it up. There. So you can see, look at my bevel cut. It's at an angle. And then here's the interior view. <clears throat> okay, you see the angle? So the lid will stay on there. Now, the next step, we're going to make a flange. So I'm going to put this off to the side for a second. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to make a flange. So let me move this out of the way. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a coil of clay 
And our flange doesn't need to be that thick. Ideally, the width of this yardstick is gonna be the perfect width of our flange. So now I'm gonna roll a coil. And again, that uh, is about two and a half inches around. So we'll only need a coil, maybe eight or nine inches or so. So I'm gonna lay this down. I'm gonna put two sticks on each side. I'm gonna roll from the center in each direction. We have more than enough clay. Now what I'm gonna do is that's a little thick for a flange. This is my, that's my start. Now I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna just gently roll it just a little bit more. Just thin it out ever so slightly, just a little bit more. Okay. And again, before you cut, you always want to free it up. Make sure it's loose. I'm going to take one of the yardsticks and I'm just going to cut both edges. Okay. So again, place your hands on the um, yardstick. I'm going to trim this edge and I will trim this edge. And this is the perfect width we need for our flange. Take away the scrap. And I have enough to make actually two flanges with this material. <clears throat> so here's my lid. And let me move this aside. So nice, there's my flange. Bring my teapot back into focus. <clears throat> and I need a small piece of clay. The concept here is we're using a small scrap of, um, we're gonna use a small scrap of plastic that we're going to use to suspend, put that over there, we're going to use this plastic to suspend my flange. So we put the plastic in and I'm going to push a little of it down. Now here's my flange. I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll it. I'm going to guesstimate about how much I need. Okay. So look at what I'm going to do. Here's my circle. See that? I have a little overlap. Let me uh, get this into view so you guys can see here. Okay, and I'm gonna tilt the camera down a little bit to get a better angle for you guys. Okay, so here we are. Here's my clay, and I have it overlapped. And you don't want it super tight, and you also don't want it really loose. So I just put it in there. I got a little bit of overlap. I'm gonna take it out, and I'm gonna use my fettling knife and move this out so you can see I'm going to take my fettling knife and I'm going to cut through both pieces and then I'm going to put it back together and I'm going to measure so there's my flange I got the edges and I'm going to come back here with my piece put the plastic in if you drop it in here without the plastic you won't be able to retrieve it and look at that with that simple technique it's it fits in there but it isn't super tight and it isn't really loose so here's the concept now i'm going to take it back out for a second and let me get my workspace set up here i want you guys to see what i'm doing so what i want to do is i want to this little seam i'm going to weld it together so i'm going to take a small coil and I'm rolling it a little bit thicker than a piece of spaghetti and I'm gonna flatten it with the, my palm, just like we fixed those seams. So now I have this little thin strip of clay and I'm gonna put it right over that seam. And I'm gonna go all the way around. Now I'm gonna blend this. So take the time to finish your work and make it look good, you know. Uh, try to smooth out areas. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just cleaning it up. Okay. Now, when we do this with the plastic, we're gonna leave, this is the first stage of making the teapot is to get your body of your teapot made. And after you, it firms up, you're going to work the outside of your teapot body and get it smooth, get those wrinkles gone. 
you know, whatever decoration you plan on imparting on your work, you want to first get it smooth. Then you can come back and put decoration detail. Okay. So there's my flange. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to gently taper. This is kind of cylindrical, but we're going to taper one end ever so slightly. And that is the end that is going to go inside the teapot. So it's slightly conical in shape. I mean, it's flaring inwards, okay? Flaring inwards. So now <clears throat> I bring my teapot back and I'm going to use the Lazy Susan again. Okay. And I'm going to take this plastic scrap. This is kind of big. I'm going to make it even smaller. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm even taking more off. Also, before we put the, uh, the lid on, it's also good you can take a paintbrush and some water and while you have, while the clay is soft, you can come in here and smooth. You're going to have a little bit of a seam and you can use a paintbrush with water and smooth in. We spent the time with a sponge smoothing the inside of our teapot body form before we put the two together and we can also just smooth in that seam. Do it now while it's still soft because once we put the lid on, we're going to let it sit for a day or two. Okay. So here's my plastic, and again, I'm going to just lightly press some of the plastic down. I have my tapered end here. Tapered end is going in, and then I'm gently going to lift the plastic and lower this flange in. The plastic, again, is holding it. Now, right here, you can see my line on my teapot, and I'm going to use that line as a guide for scoring. So I'm going to take my chisel end, the screwdriver end of my modeling stick, and my line is right here, so I'm just going to continue, and I'm going to score this in that same fashion. Just like we scored the teapot body to the base slab, or one teapot bowl to the other teapot bowl to make one teapot body. And again, I'm using a little water to create paste. reaching in through the camera here and you guys can't see but now I'm just about done with the lid and you want to leave it this way and you don't want to remove the plastic you know you want to leave the plastic and your lid together until you actually make a knob to lift your lid up and down so we're just going to leave it there in a holding pattern so now there's that now here's my lid that I cut and look at the line. I'm going to use that line as a guide and I'm going to score the perimeter edge. This is going to sit right on top. So there's the line and now I'm going to take the time to score and only the thickness diameter of the clay. I'm going to come around and score this. I'm using a little water to create paste. And just take your time. Again, scoring is not a technically difficult thing, but you need to be thorough, and it just takes time. And if you shortcut this process right here, everything you build will fall apart. So now I have my line on my lid. I'm going to line it up with my teapot, and I'm going to lift the plastic up and gently lower the flange down and my lid down and make sure my line is lined up and yes it is my line is lined up between them now here's where the plastic comes into play we have our flange we have our flange and our lid is on top that plastic as we lift up on the plastic is going to drive that flange to the underside of the lid and we'll get it lined up so I'm just gently lifting on the plastic now I'm going to take the plastic and this is why you don't want to take the plastic off your lidded flange until you add a knob because it's so easy to lift. Now at this stage what we're going to do is just inspect. Let's check out our flange and this is important. 
you don't want to, right here, where our bevel cut is, you don't want to put a coil, you don't want to put any clay there. You want no clay on that bevel cut. That is what keeps your lid sitting nice and tight on your teapot body. What we're going to do is we're going to put a little tiny coil on the inside, and that is what is going to hold the piece. But again, never, no clay on that outside bevel cut. So I'm going to take another small piece of clay. I'm going to roll a little tiny coil. Okay. And I'm going to use my paintbrush. I can't get my finger in there. I'm going to use my paintbrush, and I'm just going to lower this coil in the corner and I'm going to use the paintbrush like a little finger and I'm going to blend that coil and make it look really nice and smooth and again always focus on the quality of your work you don't want rough edges especially something functional like this and I'm actually using the paintbrush and I'm pressing and squeezing that coil I'm us actually using very little of the coil I'm actually stretching it and then pinch the rest off and again, use the brush to smooth. Now in doing so, I might have pushed this flange out a little bit. So go ahead and check and just make sure that this bevel cut, you have no clay on it. And I'm gonna come with this brush and just bond that. There, I have myself a lidded flange. A flanged lid, okay? I still have my line. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this, I wanna put it back in, never put it without the plastic, okay? Until you make a knob, and this is still really soft. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna lower this back in, and I'm gonna make sure my lines line up. And I'm gonna show you one last trick or technique. Okay, so take the time to line up the lines, and then this is a way for us to know which way the lid will always fit perfectly. And it's something very subtle, um, easy to do. Um, it doesn't distract from your work, but it's enough visually that after it's glaze fired, we will know where it goes. So where the line is on the outside, I'm gonna take my modeling stick and I'm just gonna put a little bit of water and I'm scoring just a little bit. And I'm gonna put one little ball of clay right there on top of that line. And then on my lid, there's the line on my lid. I'm gonna get a little bit of water and I'm gonna score a little bit. And I'm gonna put a ball right on top of that line. Now, I'm gonna get myself a tool. Give me one second. I'm going to use this, it has a little tiny hole, and I'm just gonna press and make a design. There, and there. Now, that's a very subtle, and now I know where my lid is, I know where it lines up. Now at this point, I need to keep this in a holding pattern while I'm going to be making my uh, handle and spout and possibly feet. So it's been sitting on this bat for over a day. It's been sitting on this wood. I no longer want to leave it sitting on the wood. It will dry my shape out completely. So I'm going to take it off. Look at all the moisture that's been absorbed from this piece of wood. So I want this in a holding pattern. I still need to make a knob for the lid. So I'm going to lay plastic down. And this is how you're going to wrap your work up while you're working on your other components, okay? So right there. Now, this teapot body can hang for a week or so while I make all the other elements and get ready to um, assemble it. Really important. You want to keep checking your work to make sure it's moist. You never leave anything uncovered for a long duration. Um, today is quite warm. Tomorrow will be cold. So... Um, you just can't assume leaving it out for long periods of time is okay. And uh, the next thing I'm going to be working on is this body of a teapot. I'm going to be playing with this. I don't know if I will do a demonstration on the lid and the flange, but I might do a demonstration on adding feet or handles. So you'll see this one coming up in the next video or two. Okay, that's it for this. Making the lid and flange for your teapot.